One group that's been working pretty hard over the weekend and we simply didn't have time for yesterday because we had so many women ringing in telling us how upset they were, is the Free Speech Union. And uh, Jonathan Ayling is the spokesperson from the Free Speech Union. He joins us uh, on the line now. Jonathan, sorry we had to bump you yesterday, mate. No trouble, Sean. Look, there are important stories uh, that, that you were hearing yesterday of, of people that were participating uh, or who were there at Albert Park. And I think Kiwis around the country were horrified at some of those first-hand accounts. Yeah. Uh, Jonathan, what do you think of the Prime Minister's response yesterday? Look, I think it's been uh, too little, too late. We uh, just continue to see them bury their heads in the sand with what was really a very significant event. And uh, I, I think it shows the state of New Zealand society. We're very divided at the moment, Sean. Uh, you know, the, the comparisons to the Springbok tour, uh, m many people are making them. And I think uh, families are sitting down at the table and, and are very divided over whether they can even talk about these issues. It's a sad state of affairs and we need leadership. The, the the Prime Minister is refusing to give that, uh, and, and actually many MPs are just simply thinking we, if we ignore it, it'll go away. I don't think that's a good solution. All right. Um, Jonathan, what have you done? What has the Free Speech Union done in response? I understand you've got some petitions and stuff going. You might have some legal action going. You might be uh, probing into the way the mainstream media have covered this. Give us a kind of status report. Well, look, uh, we, there were a handful of us that were observing at the park on Saturday and uh, as it descended into turmoil there, we, we went back and said, look, we need to contact our people and let them know what's happened here. We put out a uh, blast straight away and, and, and had a public letter that has uh, reached uh, over 16,000 uh, signatures in, in just over 24 hours. So it shows the... Uh, what does that letter say, Jonathan? So this, this is a public letter that we've sent to the Minister of Police and to the Police Commissioner saying that this is really the police's fault. Uh, now, now, of course, there, uh, there are aspects of, of um, Chanel Lal and Max Tweedy, uh, their leadership here, what the role of the media has been. But actually, at the end of the day, uh, those, those uh, aspects were always going to feature. We needed police to make sure that despite that, one side could hold their meeting while the other side protested it and we could all go home for lunch. And that didn't happen. I was standing next to uh, one of the police uh, in charge of, of just the, the, those on the ground there. And a woman came up to him as the mob had uh, surrounded the rotunda. And she said, they are being crushed in there. You have to do something. And the policeman said, if Posey Parker feels unsafe, she needs to leave. This is a public space. We can't do anything. And that is actually the exact opposite of... The so role you're of telling me firsthand, Jonathan, you saw the police literally stand by and do nothing. Oh, Sean, the, the, the video evidence of police standing by and doing nothing is incontrovertible. It, 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 it's patently clear. What was so chilling to me, I wrote that quote down because it was so concerning to me, was me overhearing them say, this is a public space. If she feels unsafe, she needs to leave. We're not doing anything. And that, that is the exact opposite of the role of the police. Mm. The police are there to ensure that those going about lawful activity in public are capable of doing so. And the, uh, for Posey Parker and those that were there to hear from her, it was very much, <coughs> excuse me, it was very much just a question of lawful activity. Of lawful but the police would have been activity. making those operational decisions in a context where the news media had convinced many New Zealanders that Posey Parker was a Nazi, this ridiculous news hub thing with the signal when she was doing up her zipper. So the police were probably brainwashed to a certain extent too and, and not well disposed towards her. Oh, undoubtedly. And so, th so that's why the public letter is one prong of what we're doing. We are calling on Kiwis across the country to sign this letter. They can find it uh, on our website at fsu.nz. Uh, you can also see it as a pinned post on our Twitter page, uh, NZ Free Speech and Facebook page, Free Speech Union. Uh, we really encourage your listeners to go and join the voices with, with almost 20,000 other Kiwis uh, at the moment and, and, and stand up and say police 
minister and the police commissioner need to address this in action. It is unacceptable. I'll read you today what we got last night, if you want, uh, Jonathan, from the police. The police media team. Isn't that friendly? Uh, Police did not make any arrests on the day, but we continue to make inquiries into Saturday's events. This includes a collision between a motorcycle and a pedestrian near Albert Park. Ambulance attendance was not required, and we understand that the pedestrian sought medical advice. We are also reviewing CCTV footage and video of the protest posted to social media to determine if any other offending may have occurred. Well, uh, then then they will, if that is what they're truly going to do, then there will be arrests made. Uh, I, and and, and if, we, if we have anything to say about it, the, the pressure on them will be such that they must do their jobs. We're not asking for more than that. We are simply asking for the basic rights of Kiwis to be protected, to gather in a public location and use their speech rights. And so we have, we've reached out to the um, commissioner, we've reached out to the Minister of Police and have requested an opportunity to speak with them on this. And we will be laying an IPCA uh, complaint as well to uh, have the Independent Police Conduct Authority uh, assess the situation. If that does not get the traction that uh, we, we believe it must, then we will consider what other options are on the table. All right. Um, so, look, I know, Jonathan, that you had, you know, some behind-the-scenes uh, contact w- with, with Posey Parker. Um, what do you make of what happened after Albert Park and her departure from the country? Look, uh, I I was in contact with Posey uh, for probably about 12 hours before the event and, and, and three or four hours after the event. Uh she was clearly a traumatised woman, and when uh, when she says that she feared for her life, she has not been hyperbolic. Uh, that that I, I don't think anyone was there intentionally trying to kill her, but things could have gone badly very quickly. And so uh, I know that she was evacuated from the scene, she was taken to a police station, and then she stayed there until she left the country. Uh, that. that um, how, how fearful she was for um, her safety and, and how much she doubted anyone's capacity to keep her safe. And so it's, um, I, I've been asked how I would describe the way she felt, she must have felt like she had been received. And I think it's barbaric misogyny. Uh, it, it just, it, we must put aside the substance of the claims, the way this woman and, and many Kiwi women were treated uh, at, at, that, uh, at that event. It, it is misogyny of the highest order. But we look at the official response, the reluctance of the Prime Minister yesterday to really come out against the violence, him saying it was a celebration um, of New Zealanders standing up for each other, uh, which I was just amazed at. His refusal to even express a desire that any woman who had violence perpetrated against them should be brought to justice. And this statement from the police, which absolutely concentrates on the highly questionable circumstances around supposedly a motorcycle hitting Marama Davidson, it seems to me that we have a government and, uh, you know, an executive um, that really has taken sides on this. I mean, we've got newspapers lionising uh, this person who, who threw the juice and, and people saying that's not really assault, throwing a liquid on someone. Yeah, it, it, it's just incredible. And, and Sean, I would say that there does need to be uh, um, questions asked about what happened with Marama Davidson and the, and the motorcycle. Someone attempting to run down any Kiwi, but I mean, uh, a minister... Uh, is is beyond unacceptable, and uh, and and so that does, the question needs to be asked. There. If 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 it was simply a um, someone she was crossing the but road, but police seem to be we, saying what happened at Mount Mount Albert Park was secondary to a, a traffic accident. <laughs> and 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 that is that is just so troubling because when when uh, you know I I had people texting me saying uh, I'm here with a 70 year old woman in a wheelchair and she's surrounded by trans activists and they're not letting her leave what can we do and I I I I, I didn't know what to do I, they I said well are the police there and they said they're there and they're not doing anything and eventually they did intervene to to uh, I was going to say to their credit 
well, it took them so long, I'm not sure there's much credit left for them, but eventually they did it to me. Uh, but uh, these, these are things that I, I, I just can't fathom. What uh, those that gathered there to oppose Posey Par- Parker, what Chanel Lau and Max Tweedy think they've accomplished through this? And I think that's one of the key aspects of the free speech argument there, that actually uh, some will say for better, some will say for worse, but undoubtedly this has pushed the trans gender movement back many years. I, I, the, the, the average Kiwi sees those things and say, what of your inclusion? What of your love? This isn't what we, what we thought you were about. Uh, and I wonder if for many a, a different uh, face has been shown of, of movements like this. Uh, Jonathan, I have to ask this question. So you were in contact with Posey Parker. I know that uh, the new Conservative Party uh, were on the rotunda with her or planned to it seemed to me that a number of groups which could rightly or wrongly be, uh, I don't know, be lumped in together as anti-government or slightly right or, or, or indeed far right or Christian conservative, they were all somehow involved or on the coattails of Posey Parker. Do we know who actually did pay for her to come here and, and who was kind of behind her visit to New Zealand? Um, I... I have a, a very strong opinion, and, and it's not a salacious one for any conspiracy hunters. Uh, no, I'm not looking for dark. a conspiracy, no, Jonathan. No, 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 I'm no, looking no. for facts. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm not insinuating you actual, but, but it, it, it's a very dull explanation. Posey Parker is a house wife from the UK who had some success on social media. She put some events together in the UK and found out that people wanted to get them to talk about this, and and Sean. What I, I don't mean I don't mean this in a critical or um, diminishing way at all. But what I realised when I was engaging with her and her team was that these were amateurs. Yeah. And, and, and I don't I don't, I don't yeah. Mean that uh, actually, that right. is a that is a reasonable explanation, Jonathan. It is the most obvious when one thinks about it. She uh, was travelling by herself. I yeah. couldn't believe it that she got off the plane by herself and, and, and that they thought we'll, we'll have an event in public, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it and then we'll go for lunch. And, uh, and, and they just, they never imagined the response and, and the need for coordination, the need for logistics, the need for professional fundraising. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, when, when I saw this, uh, when I saw the response she was getting, I commented, well, someone like this, uh, you know, <laughs> you use a platform like that, you could make a lot of money. And, uh, and, and they said, well, but they just don't know how to do that. So they were scrambling around to, to get fees to pay for their security because they hadn't budgeted for security in the way that they needed to. And, and it was just that they had no idea actually how to navigate that. And, and fair enough, but it, 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 I don't think there's nefarious forces in the background. Okay. Uh, these were, yeah. All right. Um, the other thing I want to ask you, obviously you are not, there are free speech movements all around the Western world, thank God. Um, have you been contacted from people overseas about what happened on Saturday? Absolutely. Uh, in, individuals overseas uh, in the free speech space and in the media who are, who are deeply concerned at what is happening in our island paradise. Uh, I, I, I think the, um, the, the brand for New Zealand has really suffered over the past couple of years in general, uh, but, but, but certainly events like this make people go, what on earth is going down there? Uh, it, it, it seems that the coverage overseas has perhaps even been more critical or concerned yeah. than much of the coverage. Yeah, we've got, uh, you know, we've got Brendan O'Neill on live at 8.30 and um, we didn't have, he rang overnight. Uh, the editor has spiked online. He's written a piece in The Spectator. So if you want to listen in at 8.30, Jonathan Brendan's with us. Very good. Hey, thank you so much uh, for this morning. Again, my apologies for bumping you yesterday, but you're not a shedler. Um <laughs> And thank you very much, too, for that uh, eyewitness uh, testimony as regarding uh, the police in action. I'm sure we will be talking again soon, Jonathan. Thank you for your time.